welcome to the Innovation for University of Iowa LGBTQ Students presentation. I'm Courtney Nelson. I'm Dallas Fordbach. And I'm Kate Sullivan. And thank you for coming. So I'm going to start our presentation with a question. How many LGBTQ student orgs and supports do you think are on campus? Like two? Well, the answer is nine. Which this does go into how the university really prides itself on diversity and inclusion, but it doesn't really have that trickle down effect to its students and LGBTQ student identifiers. Um, it's really missing the conversation with its acclimation programs, and the university does have three acclimation programs. These are going to include the orientation, one and two day programming, the success at Iowa online class, and then the on Iowa week before classes program. And LGBTQIA plus has many identities within it. However, the only one that is properly addressed during the On Iowa program is homophobia in one video that is shown. This is not giving a proper scope for the different um, systematic and otherwise like a mental health, homelessness, and harassment that LGBTQ students are experiencing on campus. Um, and these students should be able to be supported before and during their experience here on campus. And today we'll be discussing the institutional efforts that the university has in place to support these students, the campus climate that students um, are per perpetrating onto student identifiers, what can be improved, and why. So the institutional efforts that are in place right now include the Safe Zone, the LGBTQ Resource Center, the UI LGBTQ Clinic, and the pronouns that are enforced. So the safe zone is going to be a program in which professionals go to different professional settings and classrooms to basically show students who do not identify within that community how to be allies to that community. The issue with this is that the entire university should be a safe zone instead of just having people who want to be allies come, like becoming allies. Everyone should be able to have access to safe zone information um, whether they use it or not. The LGBTQ Resource Center is going to provide mentorship and also a place to just like network and have different student organization events um, that are LGBTQ specific. The UI LGBTQ Clinic is going to help with different health issues that are specific to that community. And then pronouns is actually the only one of these four that is actually addressed at any of the acclimation programs. And it's only addressed through you are able to pick one that you identify with and then you put it on your name tag. However, it's not really discussed why you would want to use your pronouns when you introduce yourself um, just to normalize that situation. <clears throat> so the institutional um, efforts in the campus climate are very different things. The institutional efforts, as Courtney was talking about, were those things that the university does within the university, but the campus climate are things like the dorms, the classroom, the off-campus life, nightlife at the university, things that make the university home to a lot of students. And these um, campus climates are um, important that it's reflective, the institutional efforts are reflective in the campus climate. Because right now, oftentimes the two are not um, similar. Because, um, like Courtney was talking about with the pronouns, the pronouns are, the introduction of pronouns are really um, a great part of the institutional efforts, but without that education piece of letting students know what, why they need to, why they would need to change their pronouns or who needs to change their pronouns, um, that creates a campus climate that is uncomfortable and unsafe for students who identify as part of the LGBTQIA plus community. And these unsafe environments and this um, campus climate affects these student identifiers by in a negative way by negatively impacting their mental health, um, their campus involvement. They don't feel, a lot of students don't feel safe to join campus clubs, as well as their academic achievement, and which is, um, unfair and puts the identifiers as a, at a very big um, disadvantage. So in order to make the campus climate as um, inclusive as the institutional efforts, things need to change. In addition to that, 
As I did mention, there are nine LGBTQ supports on campus. However, not very many people know about those. So since if students are feeling unsafe, they will not be able to properly seek out those if they're not just introduced to you in um, an institutional setting and then that, so that we'll be able to trickle down into campus life. And since campus life is mentioned on here, most students um, with the wake of the Does You I Will Love Me movement, um, a lot of students who are in the LGBTQ plus community did talk about how most of their harassment does occur off campus in a downtown setting, which is never really discussed or depicted in any of the on Iowa videos that we use. Um, as I did say, homophobia is the only one that's mentioned, and that's on an on campus during the day situation. So, what can be improved? Um, as previously mentioned, there are three acclimation programs in the orientation services. So the first one is going to be orientation services, which is a one and two day program. So actually in one of the first days or the only day of orientation, the first thing that you go through is a whole thing about my UI and how to use it. One of the things that's in there is we show students um, transfer in new how to update their pronouns, change their preferred name, um, things like that. We just kind of talk about it. We don't really say why you want to do it or why certain students would like to go by a different name or like the different, there are multiple pronouns on there that may be completely foreign to someone. So even just explaining like those kind of identifying students so people have like, they will have something to back up the knowledge and be able to um, affirm students in their identity. So that would be a really great place to add in that little bit of information in both the one and two day programming. For on Iowa, as I mentioned, there is the homophobia video that is there, but there could be more videos over the different identities within LGBTQIA, since there, while it's just one thing that's used for one community, there are multiple identities within it, and all of the harassment knowledge should be addressed in each one, um, whether it be um, trans harassment, um, different sexuality harassment, not just homophobia during the day, because as I mentioned, with the um, off-campus kind of harassment, it mainly does occur at night. So having that kind of image depicted is really going to be um, something that have students who want to be allies or have the ability to be allies will be able to act on that kind of harassment since they'll know what it looks like. And with the success at Iowa course, um, an overall blanket statement would just be adding in a completely new uh, marginalized identity module but since it is completely online. It is basically self-paced. There are due dates, but students would be able to have a complete module full of resources that would include all of the um, different like ways to recognize and then also the different supports on campus if you are an identifier and experience any kind of harassment and are not supported by the community. So adding that would be really, really helpful as well as um, different um, like readings and then histories of like harassment and systematic oppression of the community um, since most people do learn that way but then in addition um, so if, if there is a more support, supportive and safe community out there, students are going to be more likely to be out in the community, so more students will be able to support them in that. And then back to the orientation services and on Iowa, um, something that they both do is they do have different workshops and uh, like different discussions you can go to in addition to the actual like required programming. If there was like a resource tour that like included all nine of these, and then um, just like a different like minority identity talk that like was specific to the LGBTQ plus communities that could include parents of these students and then also allies and then also students who do identify within the community. Those are all things that would be really easy to include in all of these programmings at a very low cost um, since there's already those kinds of things put in place. In the general population there's an overwhelming abundance of misconceptions, incompetency, and inability to understand the struggles facing the LGBTQ community's struggles. Youth who are part of the LGBTQ population are at a higher risk than their sexual, heterosexual counterparts of mental health problems, harassment, and homelessness because of this fact. In fact, of the homeless population, nearly 40% identify as an LGBTQ community member. However, at the University of Iowa, they've made a commitment towards diversity. Their statement reads, at the University of Iowa, we embrace our responsibility to create a welcoming environment for all members of our community. This commitment includes all of our students, staff, and faculty as they pursue their goals here at Iowa. With this in mind, it's a very important part of the university's culture that we embrace all aspects of diversity. This 
Because of this, it creates an obligation for the on iOS staff and the orientation staff to implement more policies and programs that are geared towards the LGBTQ population to further educating the students that are coming into the university and being a part of this culture. In conclusion, the, the students and faculty members who do not identify as part of the LGBTQI plus, QIA plus community have a responsibility to be more proactive allies. In order to do this and in order to make these people allies, the university needs to put a greater emphasis on a more comprehensive education and an inclusive education during programs such as on Iowa, success in Iowa, and orientation. If the university chooses not to put this emphasis on education during the programs, the cycle of systematic inequality will continue for LGBTQIA plus students. And these students will face higher rates of mental illness, homelessness, and harassment on campus. The students that come to the University of Iowa are expecting to fulfill a vision of going farther into the world and advancing the progress of their predecessors. However, like George Bernard Shaw said, progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. It's our responsibility as a university and as a community here in Iowa City to help foster that growth and make sure that everybody is allowed a place and representation at the table in order for us to move towards a future that we are all present and accountable in. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do have a question. So you were talking about how faculty and staff also need to receive this education in order for the whole university to become a safe place. So how will the faculty and staff receive this education? We know how students will, but how will faculty and staff? So as I did mention, there is the Safe Zone program that does have professionals that train other professionals. So it would be something that would be on the shoulders of departmental heads that would ensure that the Safe Zone people were coming in periodically just because as we have seen over the past even like 10 years, um, this kind of LGBTQ plus information is constantly evolving and changing. So as long as the departmental, departmental heads take responsibility for this kind of education um, and make sure all of their professors and adjunct professors are getting it, there should be no issue in like spreading that information to faculty, especially since in a few studies I did read for various other classes, a lot of the harassment and bigotry and microaggressions do come from faculty on college campuses. And peers alike, so it's an important problem on both sides of it. More than that too, with um, the Iowa City culture being so based around it being a college town, mm -hmm. the more that we've seen programs that deal with social issues grow, um, the more of a receptiveness the community has received that as well. So they actually adopt their own sorts of policies and programs outside of campus mm -hmm. to address this educational gap as well. So it's not just something that's focused entirely around the school, but when the school steps forward, the community responds to that and steps forward with them to create a broader approach as well. Makes sense. Right. So kind of going off that last question, so when students are going through the on Iowa um, and orientation programs, who will be in charge of teaching this material to the students? Because not all staff, like we've talked about, is qualified, and student leaders aren't even qualified that much to teach this information. So how would you tackle that? Um, that would also be, once again, relying on the safe zone to provide that education, but that in addition, the On Iowa program actually does um, use the RAC program mm -hmm. to come in and educate students. So being able to have people from RAC come in to further educate students on LGBTQ plus issues, and then I know our VAP also does some LGBTQ plus work. Um, and they are both very connected to the campus, um, whether it be like promoting things in the IMU, promoting things in different acclimation programs, they're very, very attached. And then, like I said, the safe zone, they do come in and provide any education. I think the key with it, as said with your last question, a continued and like making sure it is continued and also um, like very much up to date. So it would also be on the shoulders of both RAC, RVAP, and safe zone to make sure all of their information is up to date and um, like includes everyone. So it's definitely going to be a campus wide kind of thing and also um, as Dallas mentioned a community wide thing but I think it would be absolutely worth it if more students feel safe included um, in less 
in more supported throughout these systematic oppressions and then also the campus climate as Kate mentioned in her slide, any of those oppressions as well. More than that too with the staff, um, they already have some pre-existing programs that address other social issues here on campus, like there's a Knowing Your Whiteness seminar on campus. Um, and for those opportunities, a lot of departments actually give paid time to their employees to go to these events and actually sit through the lectures and get paid on the clock while they're at it. So we've seen through the school that there are a lot of different incentives for educators to get educated on these different programs as well, so that they are able to go out and either like more often than not be a better ally in the situation, but if they're so inclined, they may be able to step forward and help advocate for them and teach on their behalf as well. I have one more question for you guys. Yes. Yeah. So um, we talked about, or you talked about, the programs before school starts and periodically throughout the semester that can tackle these issues. Um, but how can students be reminded throughout the semester? Is it something that the nine student orgs who like talk about LGBTQ plus um, problems, like their responsibility to teach students, like? throughout like the winter and throughout the spring semester or how can we be reminded about this information? Yeah, that's a really good question. So with the success at Iowa course, as I did mention, it goes before you even come to campus and then while you're in your first semester. So that would be something for first year students to be able to go through and like be reminded of, like I said, I think there should be a minority identity module that will include multiple, not just LGBTQIA. But then also if there were like there should be continued like seminars and groups. Like the school social work does put on brown bag discussions. Mm -hmm. So if there was something like that, except on a larger level that were hosted at the IMU, just for to have that continued education, I think the university as a whole would benefit from that because that could be faculty, students, um, and then even like community members all coming together to discuss these issues, either as allies or as identifiers. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Cool. <laughs> so um, up at the front, I do have the rest of the policy briefs. Um, I'm going to take a few to hand out to the additional orientation professional staff, but if any of you want to take one and spread the information, put it up anywhere, um, I can also print out more. Okay, just let me know. Thank you.